I have wished upon many stars, trying to create my own fate. But the longer I sat waiting, the less things seemed to happen. You see, destiny is bold, so bold that it will not stop for you. It will continue, and all it needs for you to do is jump. Jump into the current of your own river and see where it takes you. Don't control an outcome from fear or feelings of unworthiness. Trust and jump. You've already chosen your path. Don't wait. Don't wish. The stars are slowly dying, trying to help you, but they cannot. They cannot. They can only light the path that already exists before you. Now go. Jump. Soar. The universe will conspire to what's in your highest. So why resist? So truth. We will never conquer worry, and the more attention we give it, the more we are grooming its destructive path. If we learn to navigate by being aware and choosing to rise with the waves of uncertainty, we will begin to see the truths unfold. We will understand the experience and see the greater purpose. It's actually quite calming, even in death and complete scarcity. So I've learned through my hardships that the only way through worry is to trust. If you worry, then you do not trust you, and your fears are stronger than your faith. You will never reach the truth if you're contributing to the chaos of your thoughts, beliefs, and actions. Let that shit go, yo. <laughs> so, if you want to be free, then you're going to have to identify where your control feeds your fear. So as I learn to ride the waves of my pain and grief, uh, I must also learn to ride the waves of my life as it is. So all things have cycles. Even us, our life, jobs, and relationships. I'm learning to embrace all the new things that are showing up. Life literally never goes as planned, and the fantasies that we have are actually more often not in our best interest. Sometimes the best life we could have ever imagined is winking, but we are too blinded by shiny illusions or comfortable being stuck in our own stories. So that being said, I wanted to share with you guys what my year has looked like since last year's Brave Soul Day. And well, it looks like a whole lot of death. And not like real death, but death by choice. So meaning, if you want to do, then you're going to have to let die. And if you don't acknowledge death, then you are being ignorant to your own existence. So first death, <laughs> a lot of dying, okay. So as I said, the universe will not stop. It has literally placed a new love, a new man, into my palms. Example, I always tell my friends that I don't care about love. I'm so happy being alone and this, and so, universe, this so-called man will have to show up at my house. That's what I told my friends. And I'll be damned. Sure enough, he did, at 11 p.m. at night, <laughs> trying to surprise his father, which is my landlord, my best friend's dad, so confusing, anyways, who was in Houston, Texas at the time. So after a mouth blood-curdling scream and a close call of bear spray to his face, my journey to letting things die hit full force. So this man, I know, has been a blessing. He's been a pill. <laughs> He's been a pillar of safety for me to blossom and to let go of my old self. So after five months of attempting to date me, 60 roses, kind words, he showed up and so did I. We met with our vulnerability. We met again at our lowest. And that's when the magic happened. We trusted. We listened and we flowed with the universe that gave us an opportunity to water one another. One day, my partner, his name is Brayden, he asked about Tyler, my late partner, who passed away two years ago. It came to a part where I actually laughed and I said that sometimes there is humor in death. He said, Kara, I can't laugh at this. He said, all I want to do is cry. We were talking on the phone. And he started crying. Which is so damn sweet. <laughs> <laughs> 
and then so did I. He said that he wanted to have the opportunity to love me like Tyler did, and that he would be honored if I would open up like the way I did with Tyler. And it was in that moment that I knew I could let Tyler's death die and allow his soul self to expand into more than my lover, but to light essence. I also let die parts of me that, that I used that sorry, I also let die the parts of me that I used his death to be alone. I actually had a vision while on the phone with Brayden, and the vision was, this is so beautiful, and the vision was of Tyler, my partner, conversing. Their souls, their actual souls were talking in this vision. I was talking to Brayden on the phone during this too, and so I envisioned this where they both were just talking to each other, and then they both nodded their heads to one another, hmm. and it was to show respect. I knew that Brayden had acknowledged Tyler's experience, his death experience, and just was respecting his life here. And I saw Tyler nod at him, and it was like Tyler was just blessing him and saying, it's okay. You can love her, and you can be loved, and it's okay. And you have my blessing. Boop, start bawling. <laughs> so yeah, that's a death. <laughs> So in relationships, we have so many things we have to let die in order to be open. To be able to become a team, consciously understanding one another. And that's what this man has done for me. He has given me the strength through, the, through him to be a pillar of my own faith. So when my thoughts are triggers with worry or fear, I can think of him and let go and trust. But now I can actually say that I can just do that within myself. I don't need him, but teamwork. So last year's Brave Soul, I spoke briefly about a stalker who came into my life the week before Brave Soul Day. Well, he went to court and was charged. This process, surrendering to the idea that I was to blame for him following me home, creating stories, I was letting his obsessions over me be my fault. Crazy, hey? It took the braveness of the detective who told me that I kept blaming myself as I told the story of what happened. Every illegal action he took, I felt responsible for. I thought I had done something to cause his life-threatening behavior. Um, so it's very difficult. It was actually really hard for me, knowing that he was going to be charged, um, because he could possibly be deported. But I actually had to let the resp that responsibility die by knowing that it was his actions that were the cause of his punishment. So with the death of these beliefs, I had to change my perception to see my own innocence. Me staying safe and speaking up was what was actually brave and probably saved other women. I also had to let fear base around all men die. And I'm still working on it. But what I'm proud of is that I stood up for myself as a woman and for all humankind and allowed my rage to flow through me without shame. Feels good. I stood up to the predators of our planet and I made a shift. I did this while always holding this man with love and praying that he would see his own light. A month ago, I left a job where I allowed myself to be in a situation where a manip manipulative, addicted to blaming bully had convinced me that I was doing everything wrong. I let another human convince me that I was useless, stupid, and powerless. I felt stuck because I felt like I wanted to prove my worthiness. This person buried me so deep that I felt like I was actually, that I actually needed them and the job for survival because I couldn't see the bigger picture or the thousand doors that were open. Wait, oh, part of my guilt stemmed from me feeling responsible for the destiny of the child I was caring for. I miss her now. Um, I had to let go of the idea that I could that I could save her from her own mother. I know that the right people, including this woman, would always give this girl love. I knew that. I knew that they will always give her that, at least. I had to learn the lesson. I had to face the fact that you can't mess with someone else's divine destiny. No matter how much you want circumstances to be better for someone, the choice isn't really up to you. And if I'm in an environment that is not serving my highest, then I can not really serve in anybody.
I have lived my life saying sorry for the things I shouldn't be sorry for. I put all the stupid blame on me. But it's time, as I shared so eloquently, it's time to be unapologetically mean. I've, I have chosen grace over resistance and to always do everything with love. So I moved out of a house where I was tormented by the, st by the stalker. A house where I was flatlined, where I was a victim, where I was grieving my partner's death, and allowing all those stories to define me and put me in a mindset of scarcity and worry. For me, our homes are super symbolic. They're a place that expresses us and what we are going through. And I knew my home wasn't a safe place because I was running from it constantly. I would always go home at like one in the morning and people think I'm actually crazy. Everyone thought I was like some drug addict and all these different things. I'm like, no, I did some weird and sad and depressed. <laughs> I was not open. This death was so profound for me stepping into my bravery and choosing my life. Often to make changes, often to make change happen, we are usually forced out of a situation. But in this case, I consciously made the choice. It is a universal law that the universe is obligated to respond if we fully honor the voice inside that urged us to stand bravely in our choices. So it's by us taking action that the universe recognizes that we're ready. And it, yeah, it's great you guys. So, okay, one more death, my bad. Okay, last time. I quit my job on Monday. <laughs> Um, I'm not good. But, um, so yeah, I took off my bra and I threw in the towel. But seriously, this... <laughs> one, <laughs> this one was very hard. So my job has been my identity for the last 11 years. It's been the job that gave me just enough satisfaction that I was being a good enough, good enough person and doing good deeds to make the world better. But it allowed me to stay stuck. It was safe because daily I applauded, I was applauded for my work and my kind heart. But truth, I got bigger and greater things to do, baby. I recognized on my first day back after summer break that I had changed dramatically over the summer. I noticed that my energy was much more calm. I was able to be more of an observer and more present. But what this showed me was that all my co-workers still viewed me through the eyes of trauma. They still saw me as a victim. I knew that this was a sign that I needed to change my perception of myself, so sometimes a new environment gives a person a chance to create a new story. I knew my soul was calling me to a higher purpose. So yes, I have become whole. I let my uncertainties die and began seeing all my synchronicities and signs for my great life. I won't play small, I will not hide, and I will only show up for love. I know this. I know this. And if I just continue to say it, I will be it. So, there we go. So, maybe it's time to let the old ways die. As I said in that movie, Star is Born. <laughs> maybe cry. So, just, so, I'm going to say that again. Maybe it's time to let the old ways die so we can reach for the stars. Change is as necessary as breathing. I believe that. So don't move the way fear makes you move. Move the way that love makes you move. Yeah. Move the way that joy makes you move. <coughs> and I beg you to never apologize for following your heart, no matter what the hell that looks like. So even if your ego tells, tells you to, to fit a certain perception of perfect or whatever, let go, rise, be wrong, and please shine on rock stars. <laughs>